What's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode here at Hack Your Finances. Today, we're diving into how to start with real estate investing. We'll dive into my personal story and five easy steps that you can do to start your journey today. Let's go. Man, real estate investing is one of those topics that I love to dive into because I found that most people, when they think about diving into real estate investing or even having a rental property, it can be so scary and so daunting. And so today, I'm gonna share me and my wife's story of how we got started on our journey, share some of the practical steps that we did that hopefully makes it not as scary, not as crazy, and can maybe help you start on your journey today. Our story starts about five years ago when we first got married. And we said, hey, number one, we wanted to get our finances in order. And as we were both finishing up school, we said, we're going to do whatever it takes to get out of debt, to get our finances in order, to start positioning ourselves for a bigger and brighter future. We moved into a small little dinky apartment in the bottom of some house. We were paying as little as possible. Heck, we didn't even have internet or Wi-Fi for the first year of our marriage, even as we were finishing college. So we'd have to go to Starbucks. And at the time, we didn't even know we wanted to get into real estate investing. We didn't think we were going to be a real estate mogul someday or had some big lofty goals. We just knew we wanted to start with our personal finances and then began to open up this doorway where we said, hey, we're starting to invest. We're getting into our 401k and we wanted to diversify our investment portfolio. And this led me down this journey of saying, hey, I want to start learning about real estate investing. I've heard about people owning rental properties. I've heard about good stories. I've heard the ugly stories. I've heard it everything in between. I said, man, I'm going to start doing some research. And so I started putting aside time every single day, listening to podcasts, figuring out what books would be good to read, talking to other people that have had rental properties. We started doing some of the math and we realized, wow, what we're paying every single month for our rent is about the same that it would cost for us to start buying a home. Now, don't get me wrong. There's additional costs when it comes to a rental property or owning your own home versus just renting an apartment. So we started looking and we found this super cute starter home that was a little two bed, one bath right in the part of town where we said, hey, we're cool. Move in there. We'll move there for a season and kind of see where it goes. So we found this house, made an offer and landed on $105,000 for the small two bed, one bath. And based on the loan that we used, we were able to buy the house with just $3,000 down. The long story short is, in the midst of us living in this house for two years, we decided, hey, we wanted to move out, wanted to get a little bigger space as we started to build out our family. And this is when the rubber met the road, when we ran the numbers. And then I looked at my wife and I said, let's run the numbers again. And then we ran the numbers again, and we looked at our personal finance and asked, how much is this gonna leverage us when it comes to our monthly payment? If we went three months and we didn't have a renter, where does that put us? And after doing all the analysis, we said, hey, we feel like not only is this a good risk, this is the great risk for us to step out in as that property would cash flow well. We had plenty of margin in our budget so that we weren't upside down on the house. So we found these amazing renters. They've moved in. And to be honest, I'll tell you this. I think we have one of the best stories in the world because we have some of the best renters. And as you talk to other people that are in rental properties, your renter can either make or break your property. And so we've been super blessed in the journey. But what's crazy is that in the midst of $3,000 into buying this two bedroom, one bath house, our cash on cash return has been absolutely outstanding. And hey, that's our story for how we got started in real estate investing and got our first rental property. And this is what I'll say. Not everybody's story is going to be like this and not everybody's story is going to line up just like ours did. But this is what I can tell you, that there are practical steps that you can take. And step number one is to get your finances in order. Before you want to dive into additional investing that's beyond maybe your 401k contributions, you want to make sure that you have your personal finances in order. If you have that credit card debt or that looming bad debt that isn't helping generate income, I'd encourage you, that's where you should start and what you should work on, step number one. And step number two is to educate yourself. This is what I want to tell you. For you to begin your investing journey, it starts with learning and then learning 
and then asking questions and learning some more. There's so many questions and nooks and crannies to ask, even just down to what does a rental agreement look like? What are things that you have to be thinking about when you're doing your background check? These are all vital things that you don't learn on the fly. You wanna make sure that you get in front of it and you start the process of learning today. And step number three, if you wanna begin this process, once you've gotten your finances in order, once you've started the journey of educating yourself, which I'll add, doesn't end. I'm still educating myself every day, every week, learning more and more about investing in real estate properties. But step number three is to run the numbers. Honestly, I know for some people, the math people out there, this is exciting where you start crunching the numbers. You say, this is how much the house is. This is how much our rental property could probably run in terms of cash flow, how much we'll rent it out for, what our vacancy rates will be. And for some people, they get really excited about running the numbers. For those of you that aren't math people, I want to encourage you. There's great calculators out there, but there is no substitute for running the numbers because if you're not running the math, you don't know where you're going to land when it comes to your rental property because here's the facts. Math doesn't lie. Running the numbers gives you confidence. Me and my wife probably ran the numbers on our house and probably 30 other properties about 20 times. And so once you've learned how to run the numbers and you've practiced and you've practiced and you've practiced, you now get into the fun and exciting step, step number four, and it's starting to hunt for a new property. And when it comes to looking and hunting for your real estate property, I'll take you back to step number two. It takes educating yourself. It's researching. It's looking at the different parts of town and it's going to take digging. It's going to take hunting. You have to make sure in the midst of hunting season, you're looking every day and you keep asking those questions, man, what are the trends in micro trends? Am I seeing in my area to ask the question, should we be investing here? Is today the day? And this is what I found. There's no better day to start investing in real estate than today. And this is a quick tip that I have for you. In the excitement of looking for a house and looking for that perfect rental property, I wanna encourage you, don't get caught in the excitement and the emotion of finally diving into real estate or buying your first home. I see this so often when it comes to real estate, you start looking at a property and you're like, start fudging the numbers because you're so excited that you think this is a great property. And next thing you know, that house that you're like, well, it's worth 120, but we're willing to pay 130, or it's worth 180, but it's gonna take 40 grand in, in renovations. You start fudging those numbers to make it work and that's where you can get yourself into hot water where you start getting yourself into a deal that's really not a deal at all so make sure you slow down make sure you run those numbers build confidence and know hey the math checks out before we make this offer and once you bought that house then you get into this fun step step number five of attracting applicants and finding the perfect tenant the perfect renter can either make or break your rental property now this is what i'll say there's so much more when it comes to getting to real estate investing and getting your first rental property but this is what i can tell you there are steps that you can take today to start your journey. It's not as crazy. It's not as complicated as it may seem. Well, hey, I hope our story has been encouraging and helped shed light on some practical steps that you can take if you want to start in your real estate investing journey. And this is what I'll tell you. If this is halfway exciting, keep learning, keep educating yourself, keep tuning in to hack your finances and comment down below if you have any questions on our real estate investing journey and maybe even outline what step you're on as you dive into this process. And hey, if you're tuning in for the first time, make sure you hit subscribe as next week we're going to be diving into building out a better budget, helping build a simple budget to equip you to chart out this course in front of you. Like we said on step number one, you have to get your personal finances in order and that starts with building and working out a budget. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit subscribe, smash the like button, and spread the word as we hack your finances. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.